A woman who inspires me is Jennifer Honeycutt. She's a Danaher platform leader, but she first started inspiring me when she was my boss back at Beckman Life Sciences. And for me, seeing a woman in the job that I one day aspired to have myself was incredibly powerful. I think it's really important for women to be able to see what is possible by seeing themselves or their future selves in real life. Hi, the woman I'd like to talk about today who's inspired me and has had such a tremendous impact on my life is my mom. Uh, I lost her four years ago to cancer. And as I was writing her eulogy, it really struck me just how much she had given to me and my family and all the sacrifices that she had made. Um, we grew up in tough circumstances, my mom um, and us, uh, in 1980s South Central LA uh, under very rough conditions. Um, every day she worked her fingers to the bone, literally for decades on end, 365 days a year, seven days a week, that's no exaggeration. Yet every day we had a, a home cooked meal waiting for us, we had a clean house and she did all the things that a mother should do. What she taught me was the value of sacrifice. Um, at 12 years old, I started cleaning the house and doing things to help her. Um, not because she asked me to, because I just saw her sacrifice and thought I could do more. Um, so today I'd like to dedicate this message to her. Love you, Mom. Um, a woman who inspires me is my mom, uh, who at the age of 14 had figured out that after the communists had taken over Viet Vietnam, um, saw something more for herself and she left Vietnam alone with her sister, just two girls um, on a boat and uh, ended up in a refugee camp in Hong Kong. And so all the opportunities I have in my life today are because a 14 year old girl decided that there's something better out there in the world. Fortunately, I've been inspired and empowered by women my whole life. My story is uh, I grew up with five sisters in a house with one bathroom. Think about that. Um, my mom was very progressive. She worked. I didn't know until I was an adult. That was unusual in the 60s and 70s. Um, my grandmother always encouraged me to pursue anything I thought worthwhile. And my dad and my grandfathers were, were uh, um, encouraging too. But my grandmother and my mother really, really stepped up. I was lucky. I didn't know how lucky I was until I was a, an adult. Actually, I didn't know mom, most moms didn't work until I was in grade school. So I just got lucky that way. The current epoch, sometimes I don't understand it, but women, are, uh, they think differently. They, and they have ideas that we would never think of. We're all great natural resources, but all we have to do is look at each other and talk the same to each other, and the world will suddenly become a better place. I've seen it. Okay, I'm going to recite a poem by Eloise Greenfield. It's about my shero, Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman didn't take no stuff and wasn't scared of nothing either. She didn't come into this world to be no slave and wasn't going to stay one either. Farewell, she said to her friends one night. She was mighty glad to leave them. She ran that dark, she ran away that dark hot night, ran looking for her freedom. She ran through the woods, she ran through the woods with the slave catchers behind her. And she kept on going till she got to the north where those mean men couldn't find her. Nineteen times she went back south to get hunt, one, ooh, 300 others. She ran for her freedom 19 times to save black sisters and brothers. Harriet Tubman didn't take no stuff and wasn't scared of nothing either. She didn't come into this world to be no slave, and guess what? She didn't stay one either. Harriet Tubman didn't take no stuff. A woman I admire is Kim Curry, an extremely creative person, longtime friend of my wife and I. She works 40 hours a week. She's the mother of three grandmother of seven and founder of a nonprofit called the New Life International. Uh, that 501c offers community education, faith-based assistance to victims and survivors of human trafficking. Being a voice for the voiceless and helping to equip women and youth against deception of exploitation has become her life mission and passion. 
Hi, uh, my name is Mike. Uh, most of my mentors here at Phenomenic so far were all female. Uh, notably, my boss right now, Christina, I uh, learned quite a lot from her in regards to her uh, work ethics and just like her technical knowledge. Uh, also, Florley has been just a very supportive boss when I had her as my supervisor. Um, needless to say, I've learned um, just a ridiculous amount from them and I'm very thankful. Do, do we start with like a question or just straight, straight up? Just okay. So a woman that has inspired me has been my mom. Um, she's been through a lot and uh, being a first uh, immigrated here into the U.S., uh, she has done a lot to push the family forward and help us all get educated. So I think that's a big accomplishment on her end and really appreciate her for all that she has done for us. A woman that I admire is the notorious RBG. <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg, our second female U.S. Justice, and she spent a lifetime as an advocate on gender equality issues and, women, and women's rights. Um, my mother-in-law provides me inspiration every day. We lost her 10 years ago, and she um, lost everything, and she rebuilt her life and her career for her family and herself, and I just find that inspirational. I'm inspired by my sister. She has demonstrated to me time and time again that um, every, uh, everyone can come together and uh, uh, work towards understanding a complex set of ideas and that we all benefit once we uh, each bring our unique perspectives to apply those same ideas towards solving problems. Uh, her perseverance has uh, shown through throughout her career and throughout her schoolwork and uh, she's now um, you know, highly, uh, highly involved within a uh, very large sales territory in uh, both New York City and uh, Long Island. So uh, she really does, uh, um, she rocks. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, so the woman I admire most is Emily Pankhurst. And this really comes from a conversation that I was having with my nine-year-old daughter. And she was asking when she would be able to vote. Uh, obviously not for a little while yet for her, uh, but then I mentioned to her that a hundred years ago in the UK she wouldn't have been able to vote at all if it hadn't have been for the suffragette movement who gained voting rights for women in 1918 and Emily Pankhurst was a huge part of that in campaigning for equal rights for women. So she is the woman that I admire most. I'm just going to give you an example, a very simple example of my 13 years old uh, girl that she encouraged me for a diet. I came home and I find all the junk food is in the trash and she started dieting with me. At that moment I remember how small I am and but at the same time how proud I am to be her mom. So every woman has something in her. Just acknowledge her in the moment. This way we'll be living in a better world.